Hey guys, Solomon here. Hope you're having a great day. I thought today's video, we could see how the hippopotamus defense stacks up against the recently created cow opening by Anna Cramley. Okay, very interesting setup, the cow opening. When I first saw it, I was thinking, gosh, this looks a little bit weird. And in all honesty, it is a little bit weird, but it's not bad at all. In fact, White's pieces are actually surprisingly decently placed. Um, and, uh, you know, preparing this video, I actually had to spend some time and really think through the ideas, think through the lines, think through you know, how can we attack this cow in the best way possible, right? So today's video is the, the 40th hippopotamus, you know, video on this channel. Anytime I hear about a new setup or a setup I didn't know about, any, all that kind of stuff, I'm like, how does the hippo stack up against it, right? So let's take a look. Now the cow opening starts out with white playing very quietly, right? E3 and D3, very similar to the hippo in that sense, right? White is just allowing black to, to take full control of the center and white's gonna try to get counterattacking chances against that center of course, with the hippo, we're thinking the same exact thing. Now, you know, the cow continues with a move like 92. Usually, you know, in the, in the hippo, I recommend a move like D6, E6, A6, all that kind of stuff. But if white's playing this low, why not just fianchetto both of our bishops? Because of the fact that now white's bishops can't fianchetto, which by the way, in the cow, white doesn't even try. But all that to say, it is an advantage that, that white can't even move either of these pawns. On top of that, these bishops, unless white finds a way to block and, and really, you know, kind of get in the way of our active minor pieces, these bishops aren't going to be able to develop, right? Because the second you do, we're simply winning a pawn. Okay. So right out of the gate, we have more active bishops than they do. But of course now white puts their knights on G3 and B3, and we now have the cow set up from white. Okay. Again, white here inviting us to take full control of the center. We're doing the same thing, right? We played T6. Notice here that the fourth and fifth ranks have no pieces on them right? Nothing there, right? You know, both sides are kind of just staying in their own lane, staying back and waiting for the opponent to do something. Okay. Now in this, in this case, um, you know, I, I would, based on watching Kremlin's video, I would guess that she would play a move like a four or H four. Okay. Now if you know, white, white doesn't do something like that, we'll, we'll cover, you know, what to do in that situation as well. Uh, but all that to say, uh, you know, in this case, uh, you know, white's, white's put in a little bit of a difficult spot because by playing the hippo up to this point, again, these bishops can't move, right? You can't play a move like bishop e2 because you're just going to drop a pawn, okay? If you play a move like e4, okay, then you can move this bishop. If you play a move like f3, you can move this bishop. But of course, for both bishops to get free, white's going to have to somehow throw a couple of pawn moves in. One of the main ideas of the cow is to play a move like h4, right? And just try to gain space on one side of the board. Now, usually in the hippo, I say, if you see h4, unless there's a pawn on f4 or c4, you really got to think about this move of h6, right? You got to think about h6 because the whole idea is that white's trying to play h5 and we respond to h5 with the move of g5. And there's nothing wrong with that here for black. Um, but, I, but I will say some players might not be comfortable with, with this against the cow because notice with these knights on g3 and b3, these pawns on the h and f files are free to run, right? They are free to run. So that's one thing that we got to look out for. In this case, we, we could take, right? I mean, if, if white wants to play queen out, we'll match that energy. If they take, we play a move like, like knight d7. And I do think that black has a better game here. White's position, you could argue, is a little bit overextended. Of course, they do have some space. Uh, they do have some targets that we could attack. And uh, okay, you might like this position. If you do, great. This is this is one of the options that you have available as a hippo player. Uh, but but yeah, it, it's definitely interesting, and there's definitely a long game ahead, right? It's not like Black's just running out of the gate with a one game here. We really do got to play some solid chess from this point, right? Now, again, with this move of H4, I would usually say play H6, right? Usually play H6 and play G5. But against the cow. I'm actually going to recommend that when you do see h4 against the cow, you play h5. Why do I usually not like this? Because it's weakening to g5. But notice, there's not a knight on f3, guys. There's not a knight on f3, right? There's no knight that can jump in here. And really, at the end of the day, this pawn on h4 has no defenders besides the rook, right? Because this knight is here, the pawn's not going to be able to move up right? Because obviously there's a knight in the way. So the next move, let's say white plays something like e4, we have bishop f6. Okay. And we're, we're simply just attacking this pawn. White can't defend it. They can't hold on. So, so that's really what I would recommend. Um, you know, if you do see this, this cow h4 move, right? In that kind of situation, lock it up because now our pawn on h5 has a defender, right? On g6, the pawn on h4 simply doesn't. So this is definitely 
in our favor. Now, some of you may be wondering, what if White tries to play on the other side of the board? Well, that's a, that's a decent point because, you know, in this case, we could play bishop c6, but the king doesn't move like a queen. So if we play this, it's not like we're threatening to win a pawn or anything. Okay, so, I mean, sure, you could argue that we could go 1-2 and, and threaten that kind of thing. Uh, you know, in that case, we'd probably want to start out with queen first, just so that this move is a little bit more more sneaky. But, but okay, I mean, you know, if if, if white plays a move like like d4, you could go for this idea. Um, I'm not sure it's really the best because white has bishop b5 ideas on the table as well. I would say that even without these moves of a4 and a5 on the board, you know, if you do face a cow, right? Uh, what you're going to want to play is the move of h5. You're really going to want to emphasize this, right? And this is kind of going against all hippo ideas that I made to this point, okay? So maybe I should put a little subtitle, unless you're playing the cow opening, blah, 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 right? Um, so it's 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 very interesting. I mean, in one sense, th this is a this could be problematic, right, for the hippo. Because when I was first looking at this, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, gosh, I mean, you know, one of the main ideas of the hippo is to play a6 and b5, or h6 and g5 but the second we play that a knight can jump into one of these squares and it's just not a lot of fun right it's not it's 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 not great so uh you know and, and that's really one of the ideas that that daniel narodisky actually shares uh in his you know how to play against the hippo thing he says knight f3 and then he he basically recommends to eventually get your knight over to the square of g3 so that if black ever does this you have h5 available right so you know in all honesty, I think that G5 and B5 are kind of off the table, right? Unless White, of course, you know, pushes like crazy and you decide to go with that A6, B5. In that case, A5 will be taken. What I'm going to recommend here is that we actually switch our approach, right? Based on the placement of the knights, right? These knights are, are kind of neutralizing our G-pawn, right? Our G-pawn and our B-pawns as well. Uh, at the same time, our pawns are neutralizing their knights as well, right? So, you know, the pawns are neutralizing the knights. The knights are neutralizing the pawns. I would say from this point, you're really going to want to think, um, you know, about playing h5, right? Playing h5 and playing aggressively in a position like this. Um, again, I mean, let's say white plays a4, we play a5. Let's say they play a move like d4 here, right? Even without these pawns, it doesn't really matter that those are there at this point. You know, when you do see a cow, you want to play h5, right? You want to play h5 with h four and h3 ideas notice if we do get a pawn to h3 this pawn cannot capture back because of our fee and shadowed bishop so this is a very dangerous idea and the second that you see the move of h4 we play bishop f6 right so that's what i'm going to recommend by the way notice here we're actually kind of playing a crab opening position okay so you could argue that we're transposing into a crab opening yes i am recommending that you start with a hippo and actually go into a crab in some cases the crab opening is is basically you know the same setup as the hippo except for the fact that the pawns are not on a6 and h6 but one step above and in this position we have exactly that right we're taking space on the queen side and the king side as well the purpose of it here is not so much to push the pawn like crazy um of course that's great if we can but okay i mean if if white just kind of locks it up which is what anna Kramling recommends we're now going to make these pawns a target what it comes down to is the fact that these pawns do not have a pawn defending them nor will they right unless white just runs back to e2 and, and then pushes a pawn but even then again you can't move these pawns because both the bishops are going to be so active so there's a lot of steps that white has to make in order to save their pawn on h4 or a4 unless they just let us take a bunch of space and you know just throw our harry the h pawn down the board like crazy right so that's my recommendation um you know starting out with a hippo uh, you know, maybe you'll get a semi-hippo crab, maybe you'll get a full crab, depends on the position. But, you know, these, these knights on g3 and b3, uh, they really do taint, really do change our whole approach of the game, right? White in the cow, they're not taking control of the center. They're actually wanting us to take control of the center. My recommendation is to not take control of the center, but just use those h-pawns. And, and really what you're going to get there is a bunch of space or targets because of it. Thanks for watching today's video. I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of May in 2023. If you haven't checked out the Patreon before, make sure to go check it out. There's a lot of exclusive benefits that you gain by becoming a member. Again, thanks for watching today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.